leaving things straight So I'm a judge Tweet it and delete it Knowing you won't read it Okay, so I am gonna walk you through literally my whole process. Sorry, I just took my hair out of a bun. I just worked out. And I am going to apply a tan today. So basically what I do, probably about every two to three rounds of tanning, I will layer my tans like on top of each other. Um, maybe two rounds or three rounds sometimes if I don't have time and then every like second or third round of tanning I will apply a remover and really slough everything off and like start all the way back over so I just did that my most recent tan so I'm gonna today I'm gonna layer just like my second tan right on top of what's already on my body I'm not really gonna like scrub it all the way off if that makes sense at the end of this video I'll come back in like a week and record um, the process of how I totally remove it when I do that but I basically every two to three tans I strip it all the way down and start over because um, I always get a lot of questions is if I layer tans on top of each other so right now you can see I've got a little bit of patching like around my wrist so this looks pretty like smooth though you can't really tell like it's not patching I've had this on for probably like five days now so I'm gonna go ahead and just lightly exfoliate kind of around my wrist just to kind of like smooth it down a little bit for the next layer um, and probably like on my neck uh, creasing kind of areas I will kind of scrub a little bit just to kind of break down anything that's gathered and like gotten um, clustery and then but I'm not gonna like slough all the way like on my arms or my legs just like ankles feet wrists um, neck creases stuff like that just to kind of erase the dirtiness okay so what I use to exfoliate in the shower um, is whatever mitt that I have I'm gonna show you guys the tanner that I use once I get out of the shower but any sort of exfoliating glove from like any kind of tanning brand so I have like a loving tan one here this one works fine I've had a Bondi Sands one before um, and this girl that does straight hands on Instagram, she just recently sent me hers and I'm really excited to try it. Um, I'll tag her Instagram below. She does spray tans and it's basically like the exact same thing. So they pretty much are all the same. I'll link one below on Amazon. I'm sure there's um, just like a generic version that you can find. So I'll link that. But any sort of exfoliating method, this is what I'm gonna use to exfoliate those areas. And I'll just like rub it like this. And I like to use like a bar of soap, just like a Dove or a Dial soap, because I find that it really like strips the tan off because um, it doesn't have any like moisture in it. It just is like a straight up soap bar. So I don't use the body wash or anything. And I find that that strips it best. So I'm gonna get in there, exfoliate, um, do I want to wash my hair? I don't know. I don't think I want to. So I'll see you in about five seconds after the shower. I also forgot to mention, I'm also obviously going to shave all of my body hair. So here, my legs, um, make sure you are freshly shaven completely. And um, yeah, I'm out of the shower and first things first, this black robe has been a game changer. Um, all black everything for when you're tanning. So I ordered this off of Amazon. I'll link it below. I'll link literally all of my tanning tools will be in the description box down there. So you can click it, buy whatever you need to get on your tanning game. But the black robe is essential for when you're tanning because um, I've just stained and ruined far too many things during tanning. So what I'm gonna do for my skincare, I usually only apply my moisturizer. I won't do um, any like sort of glycolic or anything. I usually, I have these glycolic peels pads that I use. I have a full skincare routine if you're interested in watching that. I will link it below, but I'll just do a light layer of moisturizer on my face. And that's kind of all I do for skincare. Right, so I'm out of the shower and 
Like I said, this is totally me personal preference if you want to layer your tans. I tan about once a week. So like I said, I do about two rounds before I completely strip it off. Now it's not gonna be perfect. You can see like there's, it's not gonna be like completely smooth, but it doesn't bother me personally. I find two layers, like it's not like the most seamless and absolutely perfect, but enough where like I don't, it doesn't bother me, I don't notice that much of um variation doesn't look like super fake so that's totally up to you if you don't like to layer your tans that's fine but i exfoliated all here wrist hands um a little bit in here and then my ankles and my feet okay so gonna start with a little bit of prep i love the curel lotion and i'll just take a little bit of this and i'll do a light layer on my hands, super thin, and wrists, a little bit on my elbows, and like knees usually, and ankles. Of course I cut myself shaving. And basically what the lotion does, it just helps those areas tend to gather a little bit more. So I find that like having a really light coat of a moisture or lotion just helps it blend and look really seamless on those areas. So you don't want it globbed on at all, just a little bit, really, really lightly. It just is gonna make like a little barrier so it can really blend. Um, okay, so down to the actual tanning part. My let's talk tanners. I have a couple favorite brands of tanners and I'm gonna explain why I like each of them. You're gonna have to find what works for you because they all have different undertones and colors and not they're not one size fits all. So I'm gonna just explain all the different ones that I like. So my number one and what I use all the time, I get so many questions when I wear it, is this dripping gold tanner. I have it in the ultra dark color and this is by Suzanne Jackson. I buy it on Pretty Little Thing. I'm pretty sure she is like an international brand. So um, you have to, if you're in the US, you have to purchase it on Pretty Little Thing. So I'll have the exact one linked down below. Like I said, what I love about this for my skin tone, it works really well. It's like a true bronzy caramel color it's not too red it's not too olivey it just is that true golden glow and i love it it just looks really good on my skin tone it looks natural it looks like i literally just got back from like mexico or something it's gorgeous i find that it comes off really easily um it develops quickly it smells good i'm obsessed with it this is my ride or die However, if you are more on the fair side, you, I don't know if that caramel color is going to look the same on your skin tone. I am more of a yellow undertoned um, skin color. So that works for me because the yellow kind of makes it more olive and golden looking. But if you are more fair and pink, it could look orange on you, but I don't know. You're just gonna have to try it. If you're more on the fair side, I would recommend Bondi Sands, which I also love. This is super olivey and green. It has like basically no warm tones in it at all, which I've talked to so many of my friends that are lighter skin that like are super fair and um, don't have like any sort of natural tan in their skin. They love this because it makes them that perfect tan. If they use other tans, sometimes it looks way too red or it looks orange. Um, so for fair skin girl, I feel like you'd really like this, but I also know a lot of people just love the color of Bondi Sands, very olivey. Um, for some reason on me, I tend, I feel like it looks like not as natural i don't know why but it doesn't but it lasts forever it's probably the longest lasting tanner that i've ever tried which i love about it um so if you really need it to last for a while this is a great brand to go with i would still wear it and use it and it'd look good but it's just not like my favorite for my skin tone specifically but if you're lighter skinned or if you're worried about looking i don't know orangey or red i would go with bonnet sands and lastly, Loving Tan, I absolutely love, this is probably second on my list, but I 
This one is very red undertoned. So I would say it basically goes red, green, and caramel. That's kind of like the difference I would say between the three. Loving tan, I love on my skin color. I love red. I feel like if you are more olivey or yellow undertoned, something that's more red or warm looks so good. It just the two yellow and red tones together makes this beautiful olive color. So, and then if you're more on the pink undertone side, the Bondi Sands is green and those like, it just, it just work. It's like color theory, I can't describe it. However, so, I love Loving Tan. Their two hour express is amazing. Um, I really like it. It's a little more red than my Dripping Gold and I'm just really on the Dripping Gold kick right now. I think it's beautiful. It's probably the tan I get the most questions about when I wear it because people are like, oh my God, what is that tan? But Loving Tan is also beautiful. I used it for years. I still have it. I will go back to it at some point. I love it. It's a great tanner, gorgeous. Highly recommend. So I've put the tanners in my sink and I feel like this will be the easiest way to explain the color differences. So first one we have is Loving Tan over here. So you can see how like the tone is, it's kind of red. The next is the Dripping Gold and you can see how it's more caramely. Do you see how that's more red, brownish? And then this is more caramel, like warmer, okay? And lastly, we've got Bondi Sands. These are all the Ultra Darks. And you can see how this one is more green. So if that helps you with the color differences, that's kind of the comparison. You can really see the difference. So we've got green, caramel, brown, and red brown. Okay, so. Let's get started. So today's tanner is going to be the Dripping Gold. This is the one I've been wearing lately. Everyone has been asking about it. This is the gem, I love it. So you're just gonna have to decide the color uh, based on your preference, based on your skin tone. I cannot tell you which one to get, but you'll figure it out. Okay, so what I like to do, I have this basically little like tanning bag and the one thing about my tanner is I always like to keep them kind of like in a little tanning kit because um, they can tend to like explode and drip and I like having this clear pouch. It's like really easy to rinse and wash. So I'll link, of course, it down below, but got my tanner. And my number one tip for tanning is to use a pair of gloves, okay? I do not use the mitts. I hate the mitts. I just can't work with them, I don't like them. I find that the gloves are so much easier to blend the product, they're faster, I can see things better, I have more control, um, they don't absorb any products, so you're not wasting product, they are the ticket. So, we'll link the gloves. You can just get a big box of them, super cheap, they're amazing. My other tanning tool is this little Real Techniques brush. I've tried so many different brushes, this is the one, okay? It's the perfect size, and this is what I use for my face, for my hands, and my feet. And I'm gonna show you how I blend all of those, but that's how I apply my tan to those areas, and it blends like a dream. This is like the secret weapon, you guys, to make it look like super seamless and amazing. So, what I'm gonna do is start on my um, leg. I usually start on my legs and I work my way all the way up and I do my face, hands, and feet at the very end. So what I like to do is put on my gloves. Hair up. I usually put on like a podcast or something because it gets a little bit boring tanning, honestly, by yourself. Um, another thing that I recently added to my tanning kit is a black towel. Now, these are key for when you're tanning and also like just like a couple days after you've tanned, when you get out of the shower, it still kind of like drip, drips off um, the remaining layers when you're rinsing. So I notice I've like kind of ruined a lot of towels, you know, after that first rinse and there's still droplets. When you wipe down, it'll stay in the towel. So I finally switched over to black, which I don't know what I was thinking. It's genius. So I'll link these. But what I also like to do is just put it down on the floor wherever I'm tanning. 
just to make sure that I don't like drip anywhere or anything like that. And my other tip is to tan in natural sunlight. This is really, really important because it'll help with the tan looking super seamless because you can really see where you're putting it um, and see if you're missing any spots. It's also good to be near a mirror so you can like raise your arms and see if you've missed spots and stuff like that. And um, yeah, so go, you know, literally right in front of a window, drop the curtain down so no one can see you, put your black towel down and get to it. So let's get started. I feel like this is pretty self-explanatory, but um, how should I do this? Let's see. Okay, so for the sake of the video, I'm actually gonna go the reverse way. I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I literally just pump it into my hands and I will start rubbing in circular motions, just like if you're rubbing in like body lotion. Also helps to do it in front of a mirror so you can kind of like see what you're doing. Normally I would just be doing this completely naked so I wouldn't need to worry about this robe falling down but you get the gist. So there we go and now I'm gonna work my way down my arms. The arms I find the most helpful to look in the mirror because look, if you raise it up, you can see like where you've kind of missed and it's hard to see those underneath areas. So I'll just kind of look in the mirror. Okay. And then down the forearms and I'll just rub it right up into the wrist area and I'll come back at the very end to do my hands but I'll just go up till the wrist here. Okay, so I'm gonna work all the way down the rest of my body, obviously off camera, and I always do two layers kind of on my arms and up on this chest area because this is exposed a lot when I'm wearing like tank tops and stuff like that. And then I also do two layers on my legs. The middle section, I don't really find, or like my butt, I don't really think that I need two layers unless it was summertime. But right for right now, those are usually the areas I want the darkest and I like the way that two layers look. So I'm gonna work all the way down, then I'll come back up, do a second layer here, second layer on my legs, and then we'll do face, hands, and feet. So BRB. Okay, so I've just finished all the layers. I'm about to do my hands. Uh, face and feet, but Hunter's here, so I'm gonna have him do my back. So you can have anyone do your back, boyfriend, mom, friend, whoever well, the last you do. video, you get so many questions about who does your back. I know. And it's, it's just like, like whoever you, just need somebody. you have. You have to have someone do your back. I don't have any tricks for that. Um, and, you know, if you're not wearing a backless shirt, then just don't worry about it. Don't tan your back. If you're not wearing, if it's not summertime, I wouldn't like trip out about it. So Hunter's gonna do my back. Yeah. Is it, does it look like it? I said, did you do it? Yeah. Oh, hold on. I, don't, I can't see it though, so I never know. Voila. Okay. Perfecto. Okay. okay, moving on to how we do our hands and face and everything. So we need our brush. And what I like to do is just put maybe a few pumps like in the cap. And I will grab a little bit of the tanner on the brush. And you can see kind of where it leaves off. And I'll literally just paint my hands. But do you see how like 
the blend is really seamless. And I'll bring it, oops, if it gets on your nails, just wipe it off. I'll bring it all the way down. You wanna make sure you get it on the sides and on your fingers as well, just like the remaining. I usually start with most of the product back here and then use like kind of what's left over on my fingers because those tend to like get super dark. And I'll bend my knuckles and kind of like buff. Make sure you get on the insides just a little bit so when it it just seamlessly fades and look at that so perfect you guys all right do the other hand i found that this brush is the best one because it has synthetic bristles you don't want to use anything with natural fibers or anything just get this brush i promise it's the best i've tried so many different kinds and this is the one that is the best so nice and seamless and the hands will get kind of darker so um they'll blend really well okay now for face i put this on my face i don't have any problems with it breaking me out um if you don't want to tan your face then i wouldn't just don't but i kind of just focus it in these areas and I'll just kind of do a light layer. Always do my eyelids. I kind of try to avoid my top lip area or I'll just do it really lightly. And this usually only lasts like, I don't know, a day or two because we wash our face so much that the tanner usually comes off faster. I'll kind of blend it onto my ears. There are face tanners, but I don't know. I just look like doing it this way. I don't know why. But I love the way that a tanned face looks. So I'll do this. And then if it fades, if it fades in like a day or two, you could just apply another layer on your face only before you get in bed. Same with your hands. Like my hands, especially with um, quarantine right now, washing my hands so much, I will apply another layer on my hands like in a couple of days just because it fades so much faster. And then I'm going to do the same technique that I did on my hands to my feet. And I know a lot of you will ask if you get those like little black dots. Um, I probably didn't wait long enough after the shower for like my pores to close. So I do get a little bit of them, but I find that they kind of like go away and I just like don't, they kind of blend in. I don't really like care. So if you don't want those, then I would just wait longer after your shower. Maybe go do like some emails come back in an hour or two and then apply your tan. Okay, so the tan is completely applied. It's complete now. Basically, I will try to not wash my hands for at least an hour or two so the tan can get a little developed on there before I wash them. Just try and like stay, keep your hands out of things. Just like, I don't know, keep them clean for a second. If you're at home, this shouldn't be an issue. Um, but if you do rinse it off, you can just reapply another layer. So this tanner is like a normal um, developing tanner. So it's supposed to be left on for, let's see, seven hours before showering. So I usually wear this all day. I'll um, wear my robe for a little bit. And then once I feel like it's kind of dried, I'll put on like a black outfit, maybe black sweats, black crop top, or like a big t-shirt, whatever. But I'll do the robe for like 30 minutes until I feel like it's not sticky anymore and then I'll get dressed and I'll apply makeup, go on with my day and just let my tan completely develop. Sometimes I will sleep in it overnight, rinse it the next day. It just kind of all depends what I'm doing and your preference. I do sometimes sleep in my tan. Yes, it gets on my sheets. Um, I'll just literally wash the sheets. I will bleach them. There's just really no way of avoiding that. Um, if you wanna get like a black sheets for when you tan, I think that would be a good idea or you can kind of just like lay down a sheet um, when you do it. I will usually, I have like a pair of really thin pajamas that are a dark color. They're pants and I'll wear like a long sleeve tee um, and that kind of protects it from the sheet. So those are my tips for that. But honestly, I just don't really mind. I switch my sheets like every six months or so anyways. Like I get a fully new pair of sheets just cause they get 
gross anyways so that's what i do um okay so now i'm gonna go on with the rest of my day i will be back in a bit to show you guys like once it starts developing getting darker kind of what it looks like but yeah see you soon Okay, so it is the next day and my tan has fully developed. I put on makeup yesterday when I, after I applied the tan, washed it off. And so you can see like the tan doesn't really stick on your face, which is fine. I just um, will use like a darker makeup to match it or I'll just apply another coat before I go to bed, but I just didn't bother. So I just wanted to show you guys what the tan kind of looks like, all completely dried and developed. Um, I just did a workout, so I'm in my workout clothes, but the two layers you can see, it's even started to come off on my hands slightly. Um, I'll probably just recoat them. I've just been washing them a lot because of this pandemic that we are in. Um, and you can see her on my arms, like it's, you know, you can see where the double layer kind of went over, but I don't mind it. Like, honestly, it kind of like looks natural because in the sun, you usually don't get like super tan right here anyways. So I don't know. Um, just wanted to show you guys kind of how it looks when it's totally developed. Let me show you my legs as well. See, the legs are pretty tan. So oh, just wanted to show you guys what that looked like. I will come back in a couple of days once, whoa, hello. I will come back in a couple of days once this has really started to wear off and I need to completely strip off the tan and start over again from ground and zero. I'm gonna show you how I really remove it and like get it off once it's like really ready. So then I'll probably be in about, I don't know, I would say like another four days or so. So I'm gonna enjoy this tan for the weekend. Um, I still, I'm gonna go shower and rinse everything off now. We'll come back in a couple days and exfoliate it off. It is about, I think a full week later. Let's see, when did I apply the tan? That was, yeah, I think it's been a full week. So let me kind of show you what we're working with after a week. Pretty much, here's a up close. We're breaking apart. You can see it's faded, patchy, all that stuff, okay? And can't notice it as much to here, but you can see it's starting to like break up. So I wanna show you guys the last step in the tanning routine, which is how I strip all the tan off and start from zero. So. Right now, I use pretty much like any tan eraser that I have. Right now, I have the Bondi Sands one. I find it works really well. Um, I think pretty much any of the tan erasers from any of the tanning brands are good. So if you're ordering self-tanner, you can just order the one that that brand has. If not, I like the Bondi Sands one and I recommend it. So what I do is I'm going to go ahead, strip down. I'm gonna apply this all over my body, just like lotion, it's clear. And basically you leave it on for about five to 10 minutes and kind of let it really start to break the tan down. You won't be able to see or tell that it's doing it, but I really find that this helps. So my perfect formula for getting my full tan off is I'll put this on and I start drawing a bath and a warm bath and I will let this sit while I, you know, maybe fold some clothes, hang some clothes up while the bath is drying. 10 or so minutes, and then I get in the bath and I soak for like another 15 minutes, and then I scrub it off. So I'll show you guys that, but I'm gonna go ahead and apply this, get my bath ready, and this is how I exfoliate to completely start over. I've drawn my bath and I'm gonna sit here and prop up my phone and watch about a 15 minute vlog. I'm watching Desi Perkins uh, new vlog. She's been vlogging lately, so really enjoying that for myself. And I just have on this bikini top so you guys can not see everything. I would normally just have this off, but 
I'm gonna sit in here with my arms underneath and soak for 15 minutes while I watch the vlog. And then I'm gonna take this and start to scrub everything and I can, there's natural daylight right here so I can really see every single thing. It's been 15 minutes. I have soaked. So, here we go. I'm gonna zoom you in. I've got my scrubbing mitt, which is the same one I showed earlier in the video. Everything linked below. And here we go. Look, you just scrub. And it starts to come off. Do you see that? See it dripping down. So. Put your back into it. Takes a while, it's a little tedious, but the soaking and the remover really helps speed up the process. And I don't use any soap or anything, just do it on water. You can see starting to come off. So yeah, your skin will get a little red. Nothing's wrong with it, just scrubbing. And we're gonna do this to our whole body. I like to stand up to get my legs, like kind of get out of the water. And we're just gonna do the whole thing. My back, I usually just like can't really reach the areas that like Hunter normally tans, which is fine. Um, you should do your neck. And we're gonna do the whole thing and I'll show you how pale I am when I come out. Just finished up. All of my tan is off for the most part. Super light and fair. Try to get as much of it as I can. You know, nothing's perfect, but you could definitely wait, you know, another round of a shower session and do another scrub and it probably all every single speck would be off i think it takes probably about two good rounds to get all of it but this is pretty good and if you have to put your tan back on you know one this is a good way to like get most of it off so i know i'll get questions um yes when i exfoliate my tan off all of the like tan residue is on the back so i will go through with a cleaner a rag or paper towel and just rinse it all off of the side and sometimes i'll even take like the mitt and just go through and rub it and you can even do this just like when you're in the bathtub as it's draining um and like what I did earlier, I just get out of the bath and then I rinse really quickly in the shower to make sure all the skin is off because you can't really get it all off when you're in the bath with it, but the bath helps soak the tan off. Okay, bathtub is all clean. Honestly, um, it's much easier to do it when you're sitting in the bath while the water's draining. You can just wipe the side, so I recommend that, but I just didn't do it on camera. So now what I'm going to do, I... I'm actually gonna start the process all the way over and apply a fresh new tan the exact same method and routine from the start of this video so I'm not gonna show it obviously you've already seen it I'm gonna start from the ground up and if you don't need to be tanned for anything I would just like take a break for a day or two do another you know shower and rinse let your skin breathe and then apply your next tan but if you're addicted like me go ahead and just pack it on <laughs> um so i hope that answered literally every question under the sun that you guys might have had about my tanning routine and thank you for watching you can shop all the products down below and i'll see you soon